It's amazing to me as we're talking about COVID and we're looking at responding to COVID that we haven't really seen the opportunity to not only respond to COVID, but to respond to every other disease. Because while COVID is a pandemic here and now today, we have had pandemics of maternal mortality, of non-communicable diseases, of malaria, of HIV, of trauma, of mental health that have been taxing countries around the world for years. And if we invested in a healthcare workforce that was capable of not only addressing COVID, but of addressing that whole range of diseases, you know, which is just, a, it's, it's just really a stretch of the imagination and being thoughtful about the planning of how we build back better. I think we could be truly transformative in not only how we respond to COVID today, but how we kind of outline how we address health going forward. The path to universal health care today really lies in political will and ultimately a decision to embrace and understand the power health has on our daily existence, on our well-being, and again, on all those systems that we live in. Because if we recognize health as fundamental as food and water, it becomes essential. And therefore, the cost is less about how much does it cost. It becomes more about just a service that has to be put in place kind of for the well-being of all, if you will. And the reality is it costs us more to not invest in health than it costs us to invest in health. And so again, when you look at the investments, so there's, there's been studies on this. If we invested in midwifery care, if we invested in training midwives and in actually hiring them, there are studies that have shown that the return on investment is 16 to one, both in social returns as well as actually economic returns. And so what we're failing to do, I think, and the World Bank, I believe, is actually working on this now, is really costing. What is the investment to achieve a certain level of universal health care? versus the actual costs of not achieving that. So there's a mobilization of capital that has to happen. Very possible. The world's billionaires, I think, you know, are have 11 to $12 trillion in net worth and it grows by $2 trillion a year almost. So the money is there. It's a question of how we're spending it. But also it's about changing timelines. Because the reality is we often work on timelines where we're looking for results in three to five years. I think we know enough now to know that if we're going to be truly transformative in our health investments and to see that transformation really build resilience and to be durable, it's going to take 20 years. So we have to make the commitments as a global community, the multilaterals, the governments, the, the kind of the lower and middle income countries that are struggling to build the domestic financing to support this over time. There needs to be a 20 year plan and roadmap. And so what it's really going to take, I think, is people coming together and it'll be country by country. So each country has to actually engage in a bespoke way from the leadership of that country, engage multilaterals, engage funders, and build a 20-year roadmap that not only addresses the infrastructure challenges around energy or roads or, you know, the pieces that have to be made, but builds that piece of domestic financing that creates security from a financing standpoint that allows the system to you know, mitigate kind of the, the, the risk and the catastrophic costs, but also, frankly, to be able to pay for the recurring costs of the necessary healthcare workforce to deliver services.